Now, we all know about the glitz and glamour attached to the likes of the Durban July and the Met. And for many, the idea of owning a racehorse is appealing until you start trying to add up the costs. So we look at whether it's a financially viable to get into the racing game and whether or not you can actually make money while having some fun joining us to discuss this. Jessica Hubbard from Finweek, a journalist, uh, uh, obviously a Finweek journalist. <laughs> Catherine Hartley, the founder and co-owner of Imagine Racing. And Tom Callaghan, CEO of Thoroughbred breeders association and bloodstock south africa uh, tom i'll start off with you what's the going rate for a thoroughbred horse before we get into the cost of maintenance the cost of rearing the horse the going rate of a top horse that could be this july's winner the the average price of a yearling which is an unraised horse uh, was about two hundred thousand rand approximately in south africa but the prices did range this year. We had a sale pre uh, recently in, the, in South Africa that went to 3 million rand. This is for an unraced horse that's never seen a racetrack, never been backed. But, you know, the prices do start at, at zero. It's, uh, we've had stories of horses that win races that cost nothing, that were throwaways, and they go and dominate. We had a horse called JJ the Jet Plane, who many people who don't follow racing will have heard of. And I think he cost, uh, I think, uh, 80,000 rand, and he went and won one of the big races in Hong Kong. Sure. And I mean, he was he won millions. So you know what? It's uh, the so price. That's, that's a gamble, though. Hey, life is a gamble. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Tom, maybe starting point from, from my side, I mean, the, the idea of, of laying out three million for a horse, mm. I mean, it, it sounds like, a, it, you know, that's a big investment. I mean, it's a big yeah. investment in anybody's language. I mean, wh what are the trends that are happening there at the moment in terms of average pricing, I guess, a starting point? I mean, do you have the chance, wh what are the chances of actually recouping some of that? Um, slim. Very slim. Yep. I'll tell you what, if anyone asked me if this is a great investment, my first answer would be yes, but in a lifestyle. It's mm. an amazing way of life. Yep. And for people who haven't experienced it, you have to experience it. Racing has a myth about, and I'm sure we all have it, my kind of age group, us mm. under 20s, <laughs> of that it's dodgy and it's got all sorts of uh, you know, negative connotations. Mm. But things have changed drastically. It's an amazing way of life. You get outdoors in this beautiful country and you work with animals that are truly uh, they they're pure, they're honest, you know. And uh, the uh, the owning a racehorse is an expensive hobby. But Catherine will talk about you know we do there are ways to make it a lot cheaper mm -hmm. to recoup your your money. Um, very difficult unless it's a top racehorse. Mm -hmm. So for instance, our top racehorse in the last couple of years has been a horse called Pocket Power. He won about ten million rand, and he cost one hundred and eighty. So yes, you can recoup it if the horse is good enough. If, this, if it's got stallion power, that's where you make your money. There's a horse overseas at the moment called Galileo. It's the top stallion in the world. Sees two, he covers 200 mares a year, yeah. which is a, it's a, it's a busy, he does four a day in, over a season. He's a machine. Yeah. Uh, 300,000 euros for one cover. So that's 60 million euros for um, a year. And a 10 year active covering, you do the mass in euros. It's phenomenal. He is a freak. He's an absolute machine. Of a, he was a great racehorse, very well bred. Sounds but like Usain Bolt. Oh, he teaches Usain Bolt a lesson. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you that. The is, uh, I don't think Usain Bolt could keep up with Ga uh, Galileo, but he is, he is part of the dream. And I think in life you give up dreaming yeah. uh, and you work in a corporate job and you might earn lots of money, but you go and push papers around a desk. This gives people, anyone could do it. It could yeah. happen to anyone. This horse, JJ the jet plane, he came to a sale. He could barely walk. His legs were so bad. They thought he was, they laughed at him. Mm -hmm. like he's a weed. And guess what JJ went and did? He made some okay. very normal owners yeah. into very special <laughs> people. Catherine, how, how do you, what's your advice for, for getting into this business if you're getting into it from an investment mindset? From an investment point of view, you know, again, as Tom mentioned, you don't always want to go out there saying it's purely an investment. It is an investment in a lifestyle. It's a lot of fun to be had to go racing, particularly with a group of friends or a number of you go together. And our view on it is, is really from a syndication point of view where you get involved in a sh shared ownership basis so you're splitting the cost of the horse you're splitting the cost of the keep and obviously you're splitting any winnings between you and obviously it's again it's a great fun thing to do with a group of friends even from a business perspective we encourage people to to get involved as a business, either as an incentive for their staff or even as, a, as an incentive for, for clients. So and come does race. that happen in South Africa quite a lot? Well, it's getting there. We're, we're, we're working on it. Um, mm -hmm. It's quite big. It's much bigger in the, in the UK and in the United States and in Australia. Um, and from a shared perspective or syndication perspective, it's been very small scale here, largely driven by specific trainers who will do it specifically out of their own yard. 
Um, we're looking at it from an imagine racing perspective, where obviously that's our one of our focuses is to, is to grow that market through ourselves and through through other people. Um, again, it's just persuading people that this is a fun thing to do. So instead of spending your Saturdays playing golf, you can go racing with a group of friends, and it just makes it that much more exciting when you're actually an owner of one of the horses. And ideas of costs. I mean, mm. like, give us an average idea of what it costs in a month-to-month -month basis. Just from a maintenance perspective, Cost perspective. We've got it, yeah. Well, the training training fees vary from centre to centre and from trainer to trainer. But you can probably look on average, 6, a straight 000? training fee six thousand mm. to eight thousand rand a month. That's excluding your normally your nominations for the races, your farrier bill, your vet bills, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So including a lot of expensive items. They do. You know, they they athletes. They're super athletes, mm. and they have to be kept racing fit they they need a lot of, of of care they need a lot of attention and obviously that that comes at a cost um, and if, if an unfortunate event that one does end up with um, veterinary fees that can be quite costly but obviously you know you hope that that's not that often and also you make sure that um, you know you're hoping that the horses are, are are going to make that money back on the track or at least um, you know, they're covering their costs for you is, is really the place that you, where you it want to It depends what you pay for a horse. I mean, if you've, I've got some partners in a horse that we paid 50,000, mm -hmm. two people, so it's 25,000 each up front, and our monthly costs are 3,000 each. So you do mm -hmm. split, you know, between two of you or three of you, it becomes a lot more affordable. Um, you, spread, you spread the risk, and the chances of that horse winning back its prize money is very good. Yeah. But so the chance of a three million rand horse winning its prize money are very slim. So as a first time investor, I mean, where do you start? Who do you contact? What kind of horses do you look for? I mean, do you look for specific trainers or breeders to contact? Where I do you go? I think that's part of what we're trying to, 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 to fill the gap, because I think there's a lack of knowledge um, in the public, just general public, of where to go, where to begin. Yes, you can contact a trainer directly. You can contact um, any of the racing operators. You could contact somebody like Tom from a breeding perspective mm. or a sales perspective or contact ourselves. There are a lot of people to ask, to, you know, to speak to, but obviously that's, that's what we're trying to, to help people to say, we can help you. If as mm. a first port of call, contact mm. us or contact Tom and people will then help mm. you and direct you to the right, the right mm. place. Not everybody's going to be able to choose but a But it is perceived to be very elitist. Mm. So, it's I mean, does a syndicate option turn that on its head? Or? That, that's the perception that drives me nuts. It's, it, it's you know, there's obviously elitism in every sport. There's mm. always the top end. Sure. But this is, you know, this is everyday people. We've got mechanics, farmers. We've got, I mean, we've got all sorts. It's okay. just involved in syndications. Yeah, or well, involved in horse racing through mm -hmm. syndication. So it's for anyone. I mean, uh, but, but purely from a more kind of lifestyle perspective absolutely you know on Saturday come racing at Turfentine come have lunch with your family there's k uh, kids activities it's it's a great day out and the adrenaline that is generated by watching a horse yeah. run you can't describe it it's the best feeling ever one of our top owners I don't know whether I can say this on TV but Graham Beck who used to own many racehorses said leading in a winner is better than sex and it is it's the most <laughs> amazing feeling you could ever have don't worry we have this every week uh, it's, it's great yeah. uh, good. sorry <laughs> we're a little bit different we just love what we do uh, and to answer, Kath to answer the question that you posed to Catherine, we don't expect people to come in and buy racehorses off pet, but come racing with us. We'd love to take people and just show them what it's about, because some people have got no idea. My mates have never been other than to the Met, which is not racing, because you never see any horses. But we, the experience is something we'd love to share with people, and you know what, you, you might strike it lucky. I okay. think one of the no. things that from, from, from an outsider's perspective is the industry doesn't look after the people who do actually get involved in it. I mean, you know, I, I've just, just anecdotally, you often mm. go to the race courses, uh, it's poorly marketed. Yes, you have your good days like your Mets, your Julys, etc. Mm. But th there doesn't seem to be, whether you're a sponsor or whether you're just a spectator, um, it feels like you're almost an afterthought in it. I mean, is, is the industry actually turning itself around from that perspective? Well, I, I have to tell you, I've been in the industry a year and the, the progress in a year has been phenomenal. I think the realization was that you have to step up our game. You know, this is not just a sport and a hobby. This is a serious business. And the efforts that the operators are going to is just phenomenal. And, you know, go, I've just been racing in Cape Town again this weekend. And the, the, it's the, they have like a prawn day where, you know, you can get pretty much half price prawns and then fight. They really make an effort to make the, a great customer experience on the day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is, it is improving. The, the sponsors that do get involved, since we have just run a fantastic event in December, and they, were, they love the coverage they got. But I think everyone has to up their game, there's no doubt. Yeah.